Hello everyone, my name is Naveen Menon. Welcome to Edurega series of introductory videos on ServiceNow and this one especially is a basic video which covers on what is ServiceNow. So before we get into the nitty gritties of what is ServiceNow, let's deep dive and see on a high level what we're gonna cover through so as to understand what is ServiceNow. Now, ServiceNow, to be made understood, we need to go through some de facto terms, which are, you know, buzzwords these days in the industry. And one of the most important words that you see these days in computing world and technology is the word cloud. So we might as well get accustomed to what cloud is and what a cloud service is, which will kind of detail on what the capabilities of a cloud is and how ServiceNow fits into the picture of the cloud services model. And once we get to know what ServiceNow is, we would kind of deep dive into the high level details of the ServiceNow architecture, understand a bit of the software releases and versions of ServiceNow, and then end on a note of a demo on a ServiceNow instance, which I would be talking after giving you an understanding of how to get or procure an instance for your own hands-on purpose. So with that being said, let us understand what is a cloud. Well, cloud is anything or a resource that is accessed over the internet. So what do you need for a cloud? Well, cloud makes it so simple that all you need is a browser and internet connection to access anything over the cloud. So now that we understand cloud, we can understand how and what the capability of cloud is, right? Because cloud, as we understand, is nothing but a connection of servers or the so-called computers, which delivers data and its functionalities across to the user on a simple browser. And it depends on the user and the user base, how much complicated the cloud delivered is being. The cloud can simply be anything from a simple Gmail-like application or email-like application, and it can be an enterprise-level application, which has many complicated functionalities depending on the user. Now, what we need to understand here when I say cloud is this is solely owned by a third party. So when we say third party, let's come into the context of who is third party. The third party is nobody other than the company who's hosting it. So in our case here, you would understand that it is ServiceNow. So now as a company or as an organization, you would have your own products and services being delivered across to the user. And that is where we come into the picture of cloud services. So cloud services can be any set or a piece of resource that is delivered across to the customer in a very usable form. So it could very well be a simple email application or it could be as complicated as enterprise customer relationship management application. Well, the complexity of all those kind of applications is a talk of another day, but for now, in simple terms, as a normal person who uses internet, Gmail would be a classic example of what is delivered across cloud as a cloud service. Now, to understand service now, we would need to know about what are the various fashions of uh, cloud being delivered as a service. So that is wherein we come into the picture of cloud deployment models, the cloud services and how it is being deployed so that the user uses in his own terms. So the first simple model is software as a service. What is a software to start with? Software is nothing but a piece of application which has its own particular functionality that the end user uses. So you can see very well, there are some examples like Google Apps, which consists of chat applications like Hangout, Gmail, and other video hosting services like YouTube. So these are simple softwares, which is completely taken care by Google at their end, including the functionalities of the software, as well as the various pieces of hardware and its own requirements in terms of even the physical premise completely taken care by Google. Uh, another classic example would be Dropbox, who gives storage as a service. You do not need in your premise a particular hard disk or a server farm so as to have a 
huge space to store your service or whatever your need is. Now, depending on the complication of the user and the kind of users, that is when we come into the picture of platform as a service. When it comes to detailed users who needs a capability to build something on top of an existing service, that is wherein we have the platform as a service. Service now is a classic example of platform as a service and Force.com, also known as Salesforce, is another company which is playing huge in the market of PaaS or platform as a service. Now, what is a platform as a service? Platform as a service do not just give the software as a service. Yes, they do have out of the box set of applications or software being delivered across to the user. As in the case of Salesforce, for example, they do give CRM, which is customer relationship management as a software. And they do give on top of it a platform wherein advanced or super users or so-called administrators can make their own changes and customize it in accordance to their own needs. So that is wherein the power of platform comes into picture. And so is the case of service now. And another fork of kind of the as a service model in cloud is infrastructure as a service, which even provides furthermore infrastructure as a service, which we do not have to go into detail because service now scope would come into the scope of a platform as a service. So let's jive in to understand what is service now? Well, as we know that cloud-based means that anything that resides on the internet, and as you know, you need only a browser and internet connection to access it. ServiceNow is nothing but a platform as a service, and it's a computing model based on the cloud that helps in providing the infrastructure needed to manage, implement, and run any applications. And ServiceNow, as a software platform, it provides IT service management applications and helps in automating many organizational workflow activities. And this work is across an enterprise and it can be any scale of an enterprise. It can be a small, medium or large scale organization. And going into the history of ServiceNow, well, ServiceNow was founded way back in 2004. It was then known as GlideSoft. And in the end of 2000s, it was named as ServiceNow. And the founder is one of the legends in Silicon Valley. And his name is Fred Luddy. He is currently the chief product officer of ServiceNow. He is the founder as well. And he has an history working with many workflow-based legacy applications, which came across through companies known as Peregrine Systems and Remedy Corporations. Now, here is a model of how ServiceNow comes as a platform. Power of ServiceNow platform is that it provides an integrated suite of applications to model and automate various flows of activities across an enterprise, right? So it can model, it can store data, it can automate workflows and help process improvements, which also combines the powerful reporting capability and advanced analytics. So in short term, what we can say is ServiceNow is a platform which is a single system of record, which is delivered through one simple user interface and the usability of all of these complex organizational needs in terms of functionality is delivered across through a platform. That's the power of ServiceNow. So ServiceNow is being used by medium, small scale and large scale industries. As you can see, it plenty amount of known companies here. Facebook being one of them, Netflix, most of the huge financial organization across the globe uses ServiceNow for their own organizational need. So that is a quite interesting thing. And ServiceNow is actually currently as we speak, capturing a huge market on various areas because of their capabilities. Now, as we understand ServiceNow and its cloud model, let's go into some details of the architecture of ServiceNow. Now, some words and some terminologies for folks who are closely related to software would know are pieces like server, application servers, database, engines, so on, right? So in a cloud model, you would be understanding none of these pieces of software would be residing at the side of the customer. All of this piece of software resides at the ServiceNow data centers. So 
service now doesn't have anything in terms of a premise need all of their technological needs are taken care inside the data centers so service now is basically accessed from the browser which you can see from this diagram and the side where service now takes care of is where you can see the infrastructure is totally taken care by service now including the database the server on which the application servers are hosted as in this case service now uses tomcat and apache as their web server and all the load balancing needs even the security needs in terms of ssl and the latest versions of it is totally taken care by service now when we talk about db mysql is by default chosen by service now as your database ServiceNow does give the customer his own choice of database as well, but that's a talk for another day. And the ServiceNow platform, although it's built in Java, gives the end user or the super user various capabilities of scripting, and mostly these scripts are in JavaScript, and the JavaScript engine being used to interpret this is a Mozilla Rhino-based JavaScript engine. Now that we know about the architecture of ServiceNow, let's go into details of various releases and versions that ServiceNow comes with. We know every software or application that comes into picture would have their own way of creating new versions. Normally, these would follow numbers or alphabetical order. Here, in the case of ServiceNow, they do follow alphabetical order, but that is along with the name of a location. As you can see, way back in 2011, when they had version A, it was named after the place Aspen, so on Berlin, B for Berlin, C for Calgary. And the recent version, which came in 2017, July, was Jakarta. And they already have in place a name for the next version. And chronologically speaking, we would have Kingston, which is the place that they have used for the next version of service now. So these versions that we talk about are what you call the feature release, which is the major release including all the minor fixes and hot fixes along with the various patches and the new features so in between two major feature releases you would have a lot of small hot fixes which would be some bugs or fixes that immediately require attention and patch releases are the ones which comes in between many hot fixes which would include all the previous hot fixes along with some new additions of bug fixes as well so now we know about the various versions and releases that service now go with. We would be ending this video with a demonstration before which I would be showing some static slides of screens which you would get soon accustomed to when you're gonna get your hands dirty with service now. So a service now login screen is nothing but a normal login screen that you see and this would be accessed through the browser URL and any service now instance being given to a customer would have the instance name dot service hyphen now dot com now the instance name can be anything that the organization requires which if is not registered can be used which means if you already have somebody using the same name you cannot use that obviously so it would look something like abc dot service hyphen now dot com and this is something that you're going to soon see when I'm going to give a demonstration on how the screen of ServiceNow looks, right? So you would see the URL as well along with it. In the demo instance that you get, which is the developer instance, you would have it starting with dev followed by a number dot service hyphen now dot com. And once you log in as an administrator, there is a standard screen, which obviously is customizable according to your need. But this is something a normal administrator or a service now aficionado who would see the first point when he opens up the screen which we will go through now in detail and see so before we go into the service now screen let's start by seeing and understanding how you can get your own personal instance of service now what do you need to do for it first thing being it is completely free you do not need anything from your end other than registering yourself with your own personal email ID after which you would be directed to your login dashboard or your developer dashboard so this is the screen that you see right now which I have already registered in my name and you can see that there are various options that service now developer dashboard gives me 
So once you get to the developer dashboard, and now that you need an instance of ServiceNow, all you need to do is go to Manage, click on Instance after logging in once you create your login ID. So that would lead you to a place where you would ask for an instance in ServiceNow. And this screen that you right now see is after that I've got the developer instance. So once you register, you will get a personal developer instance, which would look like the name starting with dev and followed by a number, as, you, as I mentioned before, any instance would look like. And you need to understand that this is a temporary instance that you receive, which obviously you can have as long as you want it. But if you do not follow any activity on the instance, so without no activity for 10 days, the instance would be returned to the pool of available instances. So if you really want to make sure that your instance is always available, make sure you come into this developer screen in the manage instance and refresh your status or extend the instance. Now that we have our service now on instance, let's log in now. So once I log in, I would be redirected to my home page. Here I have logged in as an administrator. And once I log in as an administrator, you would be going to the default system administration homepage. Now, here is wherein we would understand the various parts of the ServiceNow UI. The ServiceNow UI has three major parts. One that you see along with the logo, the top part, which is called the banner area. On the left, you have the application navigator. And in the middle, you have the content page and the banner part has you know your logo which can be customized by yourself through various administrative options and the platform provides you various options like the connect sidebar which is a powerful tool helps you chat with various other service now users a simple use case would be a user who has logged in a ticket in service now and he wants to connect with the person who is working on resolving his incident where he can just type his name and uh, start the chat pretty much and you can drag and drop various records here in ServiceNow. So that's all the bigger and uh, the inner capabilities of ServiceNow as a platform. Now as a system administrator you would be doing various administrative activities and all of those functionalities are available on your system administration dashboard including user administration. On the left, as I mentioned, is the application navigator. So in case you want to log a ticket as an incident, you would be going on the left and typing in incident and you would get all the corresponding modules and applications related to it listed on the left. As you can see, you can see all incident module related functionalities shown up. And when I click on incidents, it gives me all the various list of incidents which were already released and mind you this is a view that you are seeing as a service now system administrator and your role is what actually changes the permission so currently as a system administration you have an admin privilege or the admin role so these are some of the simple ui aspects and functionalities of service now now for more details you can very well come back for our next series of videos. You would know a lot about ServiceNow, starting from its very basics as an administrator to various advanced parts wherein we would be deep diving into scripting and whatnot, and so that we can explore the platform's functionality. So by that, let me end this on a note of thank you for coming and watching this video. For any more details, please do visit edurega. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.